USA versus the world, the Alamo Stadium Arena. The ceremonial exchanging of the flag, good sportsmanship, goodwill, but a game both teams passionately want to win. Athens, Greece, Africa, Lithuania, Australia, and of course the USA teams from everywhere. Hello everybody, I'm Dave Feldman. Welcome to the fourth annual Nike Hoop Summit, and we've got a great game. The best high school seniors in the United States taking on the best 20 and under team from the world. And it's a game both teams want to win. It's always been competitive. The last three times, close games, the USA won two of the three. It's about national pride. Both teams told me there might be dunks. There might even be some, yeah, some fanciness, but guess what? There'll be hard D, and there'll be a lot of intensity. And guess what? It's an international game. We might have some international flavor with our announcers, Dan Schulman <laughs> and Quinn Buckner, the guys calling the game. Dan? Dave, thank you very much, although no Canadian players uh, on the floor today. Well, let's tell you a little bit about some of the real all-stars in this game. Al Harrington thought by many to be the best high school player in the country. Yeah, Al Harrington is a solid player. 6'9", he's got great versatility, ability to get to the basket. You can see Parade Co-Player of the Year. He is a guy that everyone is starting to like. Learn to play the game from the inside out. 13 rebounds, very important. Impressive. Still waiting to decide what college he's going to go to. We'll tell you about that. Without question, the best two-sport athlete on the floor, Ronald Curry, football and basketball, going to Carolina. Tell us about basketball. Well, the basketball side is a pretty good player. I mean, you're looking at one of the top point guards in all of basketball uh, from the high school level. But he's going to Carolina on a football scholarship, so you know that he's very talented. He finds people in the open court. Very, very good player and can knock down the shot. The USA team is coached by Don Showalter from Mid Prairie High School in Wellman, Iowa. His first assignment for USA Basketball. And a look at the starting lineup that the United States is going to send out there. Jason Capel from Frederick, Maryland, headed to North Carolina. His dad, the coach at ODU, and his brother went to Duke, and he's going to go to Carolina, one of the best young players in the country. The world team, one of the highlighted players for them, Dirk Nowitzki, a 6'11", star from Germany, who many feel favors plays favorably to Detlef Shrimp at this age. We'll keep an eye on Dirk Nowitzki for you among the international stars. Their head coach is Sandro Gamba from Italy, who has coached all four world teams at the Nike Hoop Summit. Now you take a look there. That's Jason Capel and that's Nowitzki. Those are the two players that are lost. I mean, there's a lot of stars here, you know, and there's a chance to see them before they move on to the next level and get really highlighted. But you'll see some outstanding plays from some young players. A very tall world team. Four of the players on the floor for them are 6'9 or bigger. Three of them are 6'11. Yeah, that, that, if you will, is going to be their Achilles heels. I'm not sure they have enough people to handle the ball. Always been a problem in international competition, handling the speed and quickness of the guards. And a quick foul going on Jerron Rush from Team USA wearing number eight. He is headed to UCLA next year. Yeah, Jerron Rush is a nice, that's some good skills. Watched him a little bit at Michael Jordan's camp last summer workout. Quick to the basket, 6'8", uh, 6'9". Six, six, He's playing Matt Nelson at his hands for And a quick steal here by Capel. Team USA out on the break and Rashawn Lewis the Texas guy from a League, Texas, in the Houston area gives Team USA the number seven. He's from Portugal. And they turn it over again, Quinn, and another break opportunity. Gerard Rush will hammer it down. I'll tell you what that was. That's the football player hitting the basketball player because Coelho broke right into Ron Curry, and Curry barely moved, and Coelho lost the ball. He does not like having the pressure of Curry on. And Curry's on him again. Good hands again by Team USA. Al Harrington nearly knocking it away. This is Suleiman Kamara, number 12. He's headed to Kentucky in the fall. Dirk Nowitzki is going to draw the contact and the foul on Capel. Well, I'm not sure where Nowitzki was going. He kind of got himself stumbling along there, but as you said, we think Dirk Nowitzki at the same stage has better skills than Detlef Shrimp. So they look at the upside of these players. I mean, it's the only thing you can really try to take out of this whole game is what the potential is. Right now, Nowitzki has gotten a leave of absence from his military responsibilities and also is away from his club team which is in the playoffs and when you asked him yesterday why he's here he said this is where my future is he wants to impress all the nba scouts who are watching this game today yeah this is the, i mean he gets to the basket he's 6'9 and, and he looks like a guard steal by richard lewis right now the usa dominating at the defensive end and turning it into easy buckets at the offensive end how about a field contest <laughs> that's what they turned that into 
10 to 4, Team USA early. As they have done an outstanding job forcing the world team into turnovers during their athleticism at the other end. Come on back to San Antonio after this. Which means they don't have any real ball handlers. And Coelho is, is I mean, he's been fighting by Ronald Curry. I mean, he'll throw it and go get it back, but he's not anxious. I can tell you that, but that's always been the nature of what goes on. If you can pressure the guards in any team, you take away what they can do. Here's Nowitzki from Germany. Move on to the bucket. He meant business on that trip and draws the foul. Yeah, and he also got a little nasty streak in him, too, because he's uh, being calmed down like he's talking junk. I think it's just his nature to be competitive. Watch him take it to the hole here. Gets capable leaning. Capel's really not strong and tall enough when you see him get over there. Rush comes over late and fouls Nowitzki. Huge numbers on his club team in Germany as he drops in the first to make it 10 to 5. Well, you know, he, he plays on a, a second level team and in, in, uh, club team, and, and he's chosen to do that because of the man from Chicago, part of an outstanding recruiting class heading to DePaul. Ooh, did you see Jules Kamara go up and get that? <laughs> Kentucky would be happy about that. Well, yeah. That's his thing. And you saw at the end of that, the steward put it in the rules. You are allowed to do that. Harrington for the baseline. Misses the 10 footer. And Nowitzki, another rebound underneath. He doesn't have the bulk of some of the USA players. Another jam for Lewis. Jason Capel, the steal and the feed. Great feed by Capel after the Zurich. Only been playing five years. Got a lot of basketball to learn. Zurich and Harrington may be two of the most interesting players in this game, and that they still have not decided where they're going to college. There's Harrington. They played like individuals, and the other countries played like teams. Yeah, they, and you know what? The other thing they get is go to the U.S. is uh, they're young. Young in terms of their, their basketball experience, because they just don't play together. Flowers with time running out in the first half. Foxes will have to throw it up there. Almost got it to go at the buzzer. It was a big lead for Team USA early, but the world team with its bench has gotten back into it and has taken a 52 to 49 in a very fast-paced and entertaining first half. Let's go to Dave Feldman. All right, Dan, we're waiting here for Al Harrington. We're going to get him in just a moment and visit with him and try to discuss what is going on here in the first half. One second here. Let's frame you up. All right, Al talk about the first half 15 points but what happened really was a little sloppy play with the ball because you guys had a commanding lead in the beginning yeah I mean uh, we, you know we trying to get a little fight with the ball a little one-on-one -on -one. before that you know we playing a team game you know pass and making an extra pass so I think you know that's all we got to do in, go in the locker room just talk about that you know not the way we play in the first 10 minutes Talk about the intensity of this competition. You knew it would be fierce, and it is. It's physical. It's kind of like a rugby match a little bit out there. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, European kids are like that. They're very competitive. And I know especially, you know, they're playing against the best USA players. So, you know, they're going to bring their A game. So, you know, we just have to play hard and, you know, play team ball. All right. Thanks, Al. Good luck in the second half. All right. Thank you. All right. Al Harrington at 15 points. We'll come back to the Nike Hoop Summit. Plenty more from halftime right after this. And welcome back. We're at halftime of the Nike Hoop Summit. Matthew Nielsen plays for the world team. He's from Australia, outside of Sydney. It was a physical game. They started with an early run. You guys are back in it, and you got a three-point halftime lead. Yeah, well, I think, um, yeah, they came out very strong. They were ready to go. We're a little bit hesitant at first, but I think we're, we're starting to get into a groove. At one of your huddles, you were talking about not only sloppy passes, but the players getting big to receive the ball. Did you work on that? Yeah, I think we need, we need to get strong against some of these physical guys, um, and some of us weren't, and so I, I think we, we fixed that problem up. Thank you very much. All right, let's go for the second half to Dan and Quinn. Dave, thank you very much. And Matthew Nielsen going to represent Australia at the Olympics in Sydney in the year 2000. A look at the leading scorers, Richard Lewis, who had an outstanding first half, 16 for Team USA. Al Harrington with 15, and Nielsen among the leading scorers for the world team. Dirk Nowitzki from Germany, a very aggressive and physical 14 points to lead the world team. But here to start the second half, the world team is going to stay with the group that they closed the first half with, even though most of them are off the bench because things went so well for them. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of that. I also think that's what Coach Ben figuring that he's got a group of all-stars here, so it really shouldn't make that much difference to start. Gerard Rush starting the second half aggressively, missed the first shot, he got it back and was fouled. Yeah, Rush is a guy that will put it on the floor on his way to UCLA. He's trying to do a little bit of recruiting as it happens here. Jerron Rush and Ray Young, two members of Team USA, are going to UCLA. And Dan Gazurik, big player from the Netherlands on the world team, is considering UCLA among his college choices. And 
Rush and Young are hoping to recruit him here this afternoon. Yeah, they're looking to recruit him like I'm sure Earl Watson's shown a little bit of flair in his game as well. Some fancy no-look passes. Luis Gola. Clean block, they say, and Harrington the loose ball. Curry pushing it at the other end. Now he's going to pull it out. Underneath to Sangela. And a look ahead. Spotsis, numbers for the world team. And Antonio Spotsis, 16 years old, has eight points in six minutes in this game. Yeah. by one with the ball. Flowers looking inside for Scola. Sangela from Lithuania going by Richard Lewis. And the tip back up and in by Luis Scola from Argentina. He's had a tremendous hit back in the game. Harrington spinning on Songela and a foul. A bit of a late call, but an obvious one with all the contact underneath. Well, where is Al Harrington going to wind up in university? He says he's narrowed it down to six choices, Quinn. Georgia Tech, Ohio State, NC State, Villanova, St. John's, and Seton Hall. I don't know. I'm sure Seton Hall would obviously like to keep him in state, Tommy Amaker, but I don't think any Tommy Amaker wants him any more than anybody else would want him. Let's go to Dave Feldman. Well, you know, Al Harrington, Dan's got a lot of ability away from the court, too. He was the lead in two musicals at his school. And I said, so you must be a good singer, Al. He goes, no, I talk very loudly, and I fake a lot of people. <laughs> Lauer still at the point for the world team. Nowitzki. All the big men internationally can shoot the ball. That's always been a skill set in the Australia, who was playing in this game, was on the oh. old medal winning team. Harrington the dunk, and Curry is injured as he slipped down. And both teams a big part of the settle and balance. Capel, Barkley, Lewis back in for Team USA. Harrington on the follow. Give him 21. And a nose for the ball. Round the ball all the time, especially in the offensive end. Harrington out there playing with Barkley, who's headed to St. John's, and told us that the Johnnies really strengthened their bid for him by signing Eric Barkley. Matt Nielsen from Australia back into the game in an instant bucket. He's got 13. Dane Fife for three. I, I like the pass by Harrington. Harrington has scored points. Now we're starting to look at some people. Remember, he has a chance to be a pretty good player. You can see he's got some raw skills. Harrington, there's some skills. Oh, he, I'm telling you, he can put it in the back. 25 for Al Harrington, now pressuring Kamara. See why Harrington was named on, player of the year. Nowitzki, coast to coast. Damn, the reason that's a good take, this guy's 6'11", going at full speed, and the guy's ready to take the charge and is able to avoid the charge and make a play out of it. Look at it. You see, Lyde is there, and Nowitzki goes with some body control. Now, it's up to project things down the road, but he says he's here because he hopes the NBA is in his future. And he's playing in front of 40 NBA scouts today. Does he have the skills to play at that level? He's showing good signs. I mean, you, first of all, if one of the things you can always have in your favor, you, you can't teach height. <laughs> you can teach him to go left and right, but you can't teach height. He has that. He has the ability to put it on the floor for a big man, to step outside and shoot it. I've yet to really see him post up. By the time he leaves there, they'll be real happy with him. He's about 6'11 as well. 6'11, great wingspan. Flowers for the baseline. And the rebound comes free to Rush. Long bounce pass to Eric Barkley. Good pass by Rush. Nielsen. Great bounce pass of his own. Scola will get it to go there. They got his legs taken off from under. They consider George Washington because they have shown the, uh, that they will take international players. So that there's, but you know what? Washington, D.C. also goes for that. There's no whiskey, and they make another sweet move. But you got that, that whole metropolitan area of Washington, D.C., where you can do a lot of things. And Gazurik, the player who injured his back a little bit earlier, is considering George Washington. He is right here. They could... Zurich would like the fact that his teammate Nowitzki is taking the ball to the basket strong. Has a chance to tie this game. We'll take a two-point lead. I'm sorry. 23. If he's going, you know, he has that kind of problem. Nowitzki with another bucket for the world team to up their lead to three at 80 to 77. The world team has the ball again. Kamara. Oh, well, hey. he's going to be all right. He missed the shot, but he'll be all right. And the putback by Michelori, making the most of his playing time here toward the end of the game. <laughs> Got to check up. Rush missed the jumper, rebound Nowitzki, and look at the 6'11 guy lead the break. Great anticipation by Ronald Curry. Mike Duncan on him. 
Instead, two and a foul on Scola. A big momentum shift there. Yeah, it really was. Ron Curry doing what he does best, I think, is his ability to change directions because his athletic ability made that great steal. But then he's just so strong. I mean, his body, I mean, he's got, like, almost look at that. This is an easy play there. Now watch him go. He not go to the basket. He knows he's going to get hit. He takes it, lays it up, goes down, actually has a good presence. Watch, he doesn't go down hard because he knows he's going to get hit. Pushes off a little bit. On the line, he missed the foul shot. Whiskey with the rebound. USA going a little bit full. <laughs> there right now, there's another steal. Scola again, and he fouls him again. This time, no bucket, but Curry shoots two, and Scola thinks he was clean. Hey. Let's go back to Dave Felton. You know, Ronald Curry chose North Carolina, and one of the reasons he did was Phil Ford. He loved him. I said, what do you know about Phil Ford as a player? He goes, man, I'm not that old. I don't remember Phil Ford at all. I just know he did something with four. I think it was the four corners. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee you, most of these players don't know who Phil Ford is, but if they have any idea, they'll know he was one of the outstanding guards to play at North Carolina. And one of the reasons that they now is a 30-second clock was because of those four corners right. and the way Phil Ford and North Carolina used to handle it. Curry misses the first free throw. The United States hit their first 16. Scola from Argentina becomes the first player in this game to foul out. His life would be a lot better off having just endured the media pressure from New York. Nielsen and Nowitzki helping out with the ball, handling again. What an advantage that gives them. Jumper is short. Rebound underneath oh. by Sangalo to put it back up and in. Yeah, he's some good job. Yeah, well, his point guards cannot handle the pressure of the USA point guards. No it's six on. And battling underneath, Sangala comes up with it, trying to find the hoop. How can that be three seconds? It can't be three seconds if there's no control. Nobody deserves the ball. And that's what he yeah, said. Yeah. Nobody had the ball. Oh, maintaining yours with your feet. And that's what these guys bring the team Elijah one most noted as the Vitsky. Oh, are they, they going to count this too? The road team wants the bucket counted. It is a block. And again, Nowitzki not shying away from the contact at all. No, he's going to take it. Does that fight get there? Foul on the floor. One more look. Full speed. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, probably a pretty good call because it looked like Fife stood or slid over there at the end. And two more shots for Nowitzki. His time is now definitely a factor given this lead for the world team. Play. Yeah, you look at Nowitzki, you see 14 from 16 on the line. That's impressive for a big man. So you got to like it. That's his coach who played on the 72 Olympic team and had a shot they thought to go to the NBA right from there. Chose not to. Some think he may be living his NBA career through Dirk Nowitzki. Sweet play at the other end. Barkley finding Rush. Get the lead back down to five. And a turnover. Nielsen threw it away. Capel and Nielsen collide. No call. And the world team takes over. And this is going all the way. And he tried to take the charge. Yeah, he, he tried to make that play. That's something NBA scouts love to see. A guy who seeks out the contact. He sure did. And on that play, that's exactly what he does. I mean, Capel gets it. And it's Nielsen, who also has been a part of it. No call there. Let him play. They come back the other way. My boy Dar Darius gets it to the Vizky. Then watch, he watch him. See, he leaned, leaned in. Sure. Put that left shoulder in. I'd call that an offensive foul. It went on Harrington. Two more free throws for Nowitzki. Thirty points on the day. He's made his point. He's young. Matt Nielsen, Dane Fife, to lay it off, lay off of it. More than anything, Quinn, you have to respect the effort both teams have made. They didn't come here to dunk on each other. They came here to win. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Tried to throw the ball in off of Young. He misses it. Eric Barkley puts it back in. And draws the foul. Big play. 
that play might work if the guy's got his back turned to you, but if he's looking at you trying to throw it off of him, what you can do is you can, if, it, if he throws it at your, your body, you may be able to deaden yourself a little bit by either, you know, sucking your stomach in, which I think he did that time, so the ball has no real place to bounce back. Eric Barkley out of New York putting together a big afternoon, especially after Ron Curry fouled out. Barkley's now got 15. What's that thing? I think the referees. They're saving the ball in the corner. Oh, okay. Gamba looking for an explanation. We'll step aside with 41 seconds to play. And here he's the captain of this team, the only player in this game who played in it last year when the United States won. Boxes missed two free throws. Barkley pulls up a three pointer. USA gets it back. Quentin Richardson. Bouncing around in a whiskey, and he's hit. And that should just about do it. The USA had two looks at a three. Had one of them gone down, it might have been a different story. Now think about this. These kids come all the way from around the world to play in a game in the U.S. against the U.S. All-Stars and beat them. You don't think that's a big deal for them? It's huge. Overcoming obstacles like being able to understand one another and the, the USA players were only together for a couple of days The world players were together for about six days But the USA players have played with and against one another in summer camps in all-star leagues Now five players have fouled out as Eric Barkley sits down I'm sure Eric Barkley is as well as the balance there who fouled out will understand that key word discipline Discipline yourself, move your feet, keep yourself in the game long. Dirk Nowitzki, 32 points. Look at the work of the free throw line. Oh, Yeoman's work. 22 foul shots, first of all. 23 now. That is a load of foul shots. And the team has shot 60. They're up eight. And time running out on Team USA. Ray Young with a three-pointer. But that is going to do it. The world team is going to even up the series at two wins apiece with a physical and entertaining 104 to 99 wins, surprising the host USA team. Dirk Nowitzki from Germany and Matthew Nielsen from Australia. In addition to the little point guard in the first half, Dimitri Lowers from Belgium, who really helped them out. The biggest reasons that the world team was able to win here today. I think you hit on the point. Dimitri Lowers was a big part of that because all of a sudden, after the U.S got out like 8-2 and getting three steals. Nowitzki was able to get back into a little bit of a flow. Then I thought Coach Showalter wanted his team to do something they weren't able to do. Lock out, get to the glass. They weren't able to do it. All the way at halftime, it was clear that the size that we talked about at the top of the world team was going to be of much advantage to uh, against the U.S. team. And remember, you're going to see a lot of these guys in U.S. colleges, maybe a couple of them in the NBA next season. Let's go to Dave Felvin, who's standing by with the star of the afternoon. No question, Dan. This guy is a guy we could see in the NBA. 31 points, 13 boards for Dirk Nowitzki. It was a physical game, and you guys pulled it out. Yeah, of course. We knew that it would be physical because we came over here, and we knew the Americans. We saw them on the McDonald's uh, game, and we knew they play physical, and we, we, you know, we did the same, and we won. I talked to some of the players on your team before the game. They said when you wear the country jersey in the world and the U.S., there was really something to prove. U.S. has the rep as being the young guys and the best basketball, and you had something you wanted to show against them. Yeah, of course. You know, the Americans, uh, you know, are the best basketball players in the world, so we wanted to show that we can play in the, in the other, uh, in the world, we can play basketball too. So uh, we came here to play hard, and we did it. Your coach Holger came all the way from Germany to watch it. He found you when you were 16. He said you were playing tennis and soccer. I guess you're glad he's here and that you're stuck with basketball. Yeah, my, my father was my handball coach, and when Holger came and said he has to play basketball, he said, oh, no. But, you know, I went to a practice, and I, I liked it, and then I played basketball. We're going to see you back here in the NBA, maybe another debt left shrimp someday? Oh, I hope so. You know, I don't know yet. Thanks. Congratulations. No, thank you. Dan, the star of the game.